It's six in the morning and I'm sitting in our booth and I can't stop crying. I don't know why I'm here. I woke up and out of instinct threw on my jacket and made my way to the diner without a second thought. And then I realized that you weren't coming or never coming back. You and I have come to this diner once a month on the same day at the same time for years. It was a tradition. It was our tradition. When I see the slip of paper tucked into the corner of the booth we always used to sit at so you could eat while looking at your two favorite things, the sky and your sky, I feel as if I can't breathe. I read the words over and over. Pebbles skip across the lake, sending slight ripples under the hot blaze. I know exactly the place you're talking about. When I finally arrive at the lake where we used to fish and swim, I don't know what I am expecting to find. A message from you, perhaps. A memento, or a letter, or something, anything, to help me feel a little bit closer to your quickly fading memory. I keep on replaying the events in my head, the diner, the poem, trying to make sense of it all. Could it? No. I don't dare open my mind to the hope lurking at the edge of my brain. Because if it isn't you, if it's just chance or imagination or anything else, I won't just be devastated. It will destroy me. I head over to the park where we always used to play when I was younger. When I find the heart-shaped locket buried in the mulch underneath the swings, and see a picture of us, smiling, happy. I don't understand. How is this here? Maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe I never even woke up. I'm still in bed with tear-stained cheeks and unwashed hair, one of your old shirts thrown over my body, and your favorite album clenched in my shaking hands. But for now, there's only one thing to do, even if it's all in my imagination. I spot a red and white checkered picnic blanket in the middle of the field where you used to chase me around with open arms and laughter erupting out of both of our mouths. I open up the basket, curious to see its contents, a piece of paper, and a plethora of all of my favorite foods. The memories flow before I can stop them. Your favorite color was green, evergreen. You loved warm sunsets and Ernest Hemingway, and you always said that before you died, you wanted to visit every country in the whole world. I guess that'll never happen now, though. The thought of you never fulfilling your dreams causes me to lose the little appetite I had. I turn to the piece of paper, opening it up with bittersweet memories. On it is a drawing of purple flowers, the kind that you used to buy a fresh bouquet of every Saturday at the farmer's market. I think I know what you want me to do, so I set out into the day with your hands around my heart and your voice echoing through my ears. I'm standing in front of your grave in the family plot for the first time since your funeral, with shaking hands and an even shakier heart. In my trembling fingers are the bouquet of flowers, your favorite. I place them down next to an envelope marked with my name. My heart lurches as I open the letter. My dearest Sky, I can only hope that in this adventure you learn that you are still allowed to live, still allowed to love, still allowed to laugh and be happy. You have grown up to be an amazing girl, and I couldn't be prouder. I love you to the moon and back, and even though I'm no longer next to you, I will always be in your heart. Love, Dad. Tears trailed on my face, at first slowly and delicately, but soon they grow into a full-out hurricane. I throw the letter to the ground, fall to my knees in front of what remains out of you. How could you? How could you leave me like that? I loved you. I loved you so much. And you... You loved me. I didn't cry. Not at the hospital. Not at your funeral. But now, I cry until there are no more tears left. I cry until I am lying on the ground and everything around me fades to black. I'm not ready to move on. Not yet. Just a little bit longer. A few more hours. When I wake up, it's six in the evening. 
I look up at the stars, knowing that I have to leave, that it's finally time for us to part ways. Thank you, Dad. I love you. <laughs>